Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a science fiction comedy film. R.I.P.D. Part 2. Rise of the Damned. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The movie begins in 1876, where we are taken to the Red Creek Mine. A man named Otis is digging inside the mine. Suddenly, he breaks open a portal. A mini earthquake strikes the mine, causing Otis to fall to the ground. He approaches the portal and puts his hand out, but gets burned by the flames. Suddenly, a mysterious force enters his smelly mouth and possesses him by forming a symbol on his chest. Otis awakens with demon eyes and plans something sinister. One month later, we are taken to a busy train station where a sheriff named Roy meets his daughter and her lanky fiancé called Lanky. Roy doesn't like Lanky and makes fun of him, but his daughter tells him to take it easy on him. Suddenly, the station comes under attack by some goons that come all guns blazing. Roy takes his daughter to a safe spot, and then he proceeds to engage in an all-out battle against the goons. A tense sequence follows as this plays out like a western shootout. Roy seems to be doing well for himself as he takes down one of the goons, but then we see a hidden goon sneaking up on him from behind. Roy gets shot, and he dies, after which he is suddenly transported to a supernatural office. There, Roy pukes into a bucket because of the bumpy ride, and then he meets a pretty officer. She tells him that he was about to go to heaven, but got sent on a detour to the Rest in Peace Department, called R.I.P.D. for short. Roy is told that he's dead, so he asks about his daughter. The officer says the status is negative, and it makes Roy emotional, but then she explains that negative means not dead. Now the officer states that Roy has been recruited by R.I.P.D. so that he can help them take down the monsters known as Dedos that are possessing humans in the real world. Roy is told that these monsters need to be sent back to hell, and the officer takes him to the weapons division. There, Roy is told that his normal gun isn't good enough to take down the monsters, so he's given an upgraded plasma shooter. She shows Roy the monster symbol and says she will send him back to Earth to kill the monsters in Red Creek. Roy is ready for the mission, but the officer says that he should only focus on the monsters rather than looking for revenge. Roy spits into his hand and agrees to undertake the mission, but he also gets branded like a steer. Afterward, Roy gets teleported via another portal, and he pukes once more before he steps out only to be taken down by some bisons. He gathers himself, and then he is greeted by his partner named Knight. Roy doesn't like her attitude and tries to say he's her senior, but Knight says that she's 445 years old. Meanwhile, the goons from earlier try to rob a bank and kick off another shootout. Back to Roy, he rides his Ferrari horse back to his daughter's house and stares at her from the background. However, Knight drags him away because she doesn't want him to stray away from her mission. Roy says that Knight can't stop him from seeing his daughter, so they get into an intense battle. Roy has a hard time adjusting to his new body, but eventually manages to land the draw with Knight. That's when Knight shows Roy his reflection, and he learns that he has now become a woman as part of his R.I.P.D. disguise. Knight explains how disguises work in the real world, and also mentions that Roy's body was taken away by some coyotes, which means that his gray only has certain body parts in it. This makes Roy angry, and it only gets worse when he learns that his daughter won't understand a word he says to her, because she is a loved one. Knight tries to cheer him up, but Roy becomes furious. Now, the team is interrupted by one of Roy's friends. Knight takes this chance to make fun of Roy in front of the friend. However, he sides with Roy and says he was a man who always had his back. Unfortunately, he also explains that Lanky has been kidnapped by the goons, so Roy wants to go save him. Knight tells him this is out of his jurisdiction, but Roy argues that Lanky makes his daughter happy, and that's all that matters to him. He sets off and finds the same bank goons who have now been arrested. Knight catches up to Roy, who explains that these goons are all part of a family, but he had shot one of them dead, so it's impossible that all of them are still alive. He goes down to check up on the goons, and that's when he spots the monster symbols on his victim's chest. Realizing that these goons are monsters, Knight states that this falls under the RIPV's jurisdiction, so she tries to distract the officers by saying her sister needs help. The officers aren't keen on helping her at first, but then she shows some silver, so they get interested. Knight leads two officers to Roy, who plays dead on the ground to trick them. The team carries out their surprise attack, and they take down the first two officers, after which they go for the others. Roy is shot in the process, but the bullet only feels like a snake bite to him now. The officers are tied up, but Roy isn't able to break through the locks holding the monsters. Knight brings out some holy water and sprays it on the monster shot by Roy. This triggers him to transform into a deadly beast, and he breaks out of his cage and begins to attack the team. 
Luckily, Roy uses his plasma gun to kill a monster, after which Knight kills the other surviving monster. Only one monster named Slim is left and shown to be a coward. Knight takes him away for questioning, but Roy sees a wanted sign and learns that Slim is the same goon who shot him dead back at the train station. Roy wants revenge, but then Knight says that they need to question Slim for more intel. She uses some holy water, so he briefly transforms, after which he eventually agrees to talk and reveals that Otis is commanding all the other monsters to bring him humans for an evil plan. The teen wants to know how Otis is able to control so many monsters, so Slim explains that Otis has the same RIPD plasma gun as Roy. Later, the team makes its way to Otis's lair, and then we see one of Otis's followers named Rogue questioning his authority. Otis reveals that he's trying to open up a gateway to the underworld, so that he can bring monster souls over to this world. Rogue says she believes in him, but can't speak for any of the other monsters. Now we see the team on their way to find Otis. Slim pokes fun at Roy, but he shoots him with normal bullets as punishment. Then Roy mentions that he wants to get done with his mission, so that he can finally be reunited with his dead wife in heaven. Knight jokes by saying that his wife might have moved on, because there are plenty of handsome men in heaven. Slim laughs along with Knight over her jokes, but Roy shoots him some more to make a statement. Now Otis talks to his primary opposer, and starts to talk about his grand biblical mission. His words fall on deaf ears, so Otis rips into his opposer's chest, and pulls out his monster head. Otis kills the monster head with his plasma gun, and then he orders the other monsters to carry on with his plan. Back to the team, they get annoyed by Slim's constant chatting, so Roy shoots him again, but he starts to like the pain of the bullets. Now the team makes it to a local town, which looks strangely empty. They make Slim look like their prisoner, and bring him to a hotel, where they want to book a room. The hotel owner is very racist, so Roy decides to threaten him with his gun, and then he makes hotel owner burn down one of his offensive signs. The sight of the burning paper triggers Knight because of her fire phobia, so she turns around. Hotel owner summons his assistant and treats her nicely, much to her surprise. Then, the assistant takes the team to their room and recognizes Slim by looking at his hands. She says that Slim is a nice man, but the others don't believe that a monster can be nice. Knight realizes that the air in this town is poisoned, but isn't infecting them, because they're dead already. Now, we're taken to Otis's prison camp, where Lanky is trying to convince the other prisoners not to take off their masks. He takes off his own mask to prove his point, as he starts to cough and suffer. Now that the others believe him, he puts his mask back on and regains his breath. Meanwhile, hotel owner also starts to fall sick, so he cuts his curtain and coughs into the cloth. Then he spots Otis loading up his workers, so that he can take them to the mine. Hotel owner visits Otis and begs him to give him a mask so that he can survive the gas. However, Otis simply taunts, saying that he should embrace death. Hotel owner doesn't care and begs for a mask, so Otis gives him one. However, he also takes hotel owner in as one of his prisoners. Now, the team ties up Slim so that they can continue their mission without him, but then he reveals that he has Roy's plasma gun. Slim gives it back and says that he could have shot both Roy and Knight if he wanted to, but he didn't. Roy wants to give Slim a chance, but Knight is against it. The teen leaves Slim behind, who keeps saying that he was framed for shooting Roy. They go downstairs and find a desecrated church, which angers Knight. They find hotel owner and learn about what Otis did to him. This makes Knight realize that Otis wants to open the gates to the underworld, so that the monster souls can come back and possess all the humans. It turns out, Otis is using actual humans to dig through the mine, because monsters are not allowed to break through the barriers protecting the underworld. Suddenly, some monster goons attack the team, and an intense fight breaks out. Meanwhile, the assistant finds a note in hotel owner's office, and immediately goes to free Slim. She shows him the note, but begins to die from the fumes. Slim gives her a mask, and then he heads out to help his team. Unfortunately, Roy and Knight have been taken in as prisoners, and then they meet Rogue, whom Knight recognizes as a Rogue Gar IPD officer. It turns out that this is how Otis has been able to get his hands on a plasma gun. Lanky is brought into the cell as well, but he manages to put up a fight before he gets thrown inside. Roy has an emotional moment with his daughter's fiancé Lanky, but also has to keep up his disguise, because Lanky doesn't know who he is. After a brief bonding session, Lanky is taken away to dig into the underworld. The team is then confronted by Rogue and Otis. After a brief back and forth, Rogue refers to Knight as Jean Dark and walks away. That's when Roy realizes that Knight is actually the Holy Joan of Arc. Later, the gateway to the underworld is broken by the humans, and then Otis basks in the glory of his victory. The demon souls start possessing everyone, while Roy and Knight are trying to figure out a way to reverse the procedure. 
Knight reveals that she's carrying the Tears of Christ, which is the only way to close the gate to the underworld. That's when Slim shows up and acts in front of the guards to gain their trust. He manages to take Roy's plasma gun to kill one of the guards, and Knight helps him kill the other one. Slim negotiates a deal with the team so that his soul can get retrial. He also shows Roy hotel owner's note, which reveals that Slim was framed for his murder. Meanwhile, Lanky tries to keep the humans away from the monster souls by telling them to avoid eye contact. Roy wants to take Knight to the final battle, but she's unable to do so because of her fear of fire. She gives Roy the tears of Christ, and then Slim takes him to Otis. They try to deceive Otis and shoot him, but he gets saved by a monster soul. A fierce shootout follows, and Roy uses both his plasma gun and Knight's sword to take on the monsters. However, he gets dominated by a bulky monster and struggles against him. Roy is about to be killed next to the underworld gate, but then Knight comes to the scene. She gets over her fear of fire by jumping over the gate and drops the tears of Christ into it. She also kills the bulky monster and makes Roy hold on to her sword for support as the gate finally closes. However, Onus shows up and transforms into his demonic form, Astaroth, who is the right hand to the devil. Otis attacks the team and manages to beat them down with his powers. Roy and Knight try their best to fight him, but he is way too strong for them. He is about to suck their souls out, but Knight manages to free Roy from Otis. Roy lands next to the Tears of Christ, so he loads them into his shotgun and fires them at Otis, finally killing him in the process. Now that the danger is over, everyone gets together and then Slim brings Hotel Owner over to the team. Hotel Owner finally admits that he was the one who shot Roy at the station and put the blame on Slim because it was the easier way out. Now, the team makes Slim the new sheriff, after which they put Hotel Owner in jail. The team gets invited to Lanky's wedding with Roy's daughter, and Roy wants to give his regards, but he only speaks gibberish through his disguise. Anyway, he bids an emotional farewell to the couple, and learns that he also can't speak in front of Lanky, because his soul now considers him to be a loved one. Once they reach their portal, Roy thanks Knight for her service and says goodbye, but then, she tells him that his RIPV contract is for 100 years. The movie ends with Roy in disbelief, and soon he's knocked down by a bison once again. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.